Hello Zwifters, welcome to another episode of How to Run on Zwift. Today we're going to specifically be looking at a foot pod, one foot pod in particular, the Stride. You may have heard of it, I hope you have heard of it. It is supposed to be the best, most accurate foot pod to use on Zwift. Now there are actually two versions of the Stride foot pod. Um, one is called the Stride and one is called the Stride Live. They both look pretty much like that. That is the Stride foot pod. Fairly flat and thin, fairly small. And that fits with a little clip onto your shoe. Originally, um, when it first came out, uh, the Stride was a little pod that you kind of clipped to your shorts. And then as uh, they moved on with their development, Stride became this, the Pioneer. Um, the Stride Pioneer was a heart rate belt, a heart rate monitor, um, and it, it fitted on your chest like this, and it's just a, it clips off like this, look. And that, that you can still pick that up, um, but that's, uh, that's obsolete now. Um, and then it developed into a foot pod. So the thing about the Stride foot pod is it was originally developed as a power meter for runners. So you know cyclists have power meters in their bikes that measures their level of effort in training and in races. Um, and historically with running, we've measured our level of effort um, with our heart rate and with pace. Um, but now for the first time we had the Stride foot pod or originally the Stride chest strap which measured power in running. So it was another metric to add to your arsenal of metrics. There's a lot of argument, a lot of debate about whether it means anything, whether the numbers are correct or not. That's kind of neither here nor there when we're talking about running on Zwift. And what's happened with running on Zwift is people have found that using the Stride foot pod has been extremely accurate. And so what Stride did was they developed a version of their foot pod called the Stride Live. So the Stride Live did away with the metrics that you get for power in running. Um, and that made the foot pod a lot cheaper. So you can now go and buy a Stride Live with all the advantages of the accuracy of the foot pod, uh, but without the power metrics. So if you go to the Zwift website, zwift.com forward slash run, you will be able to buy a Stride Live. Let's just go and show you that here. That's a Zwift web page. If you scroll down a bit and it says what you need to run, I need a foot pod. So you click on that and it will take you to the Stride website, stride.com forward slash live. And you can see here, buy Stride Live, $99. They do ship to the UK or they ship around the world. So you can get your Stride Live by going to the Zwift website or by going direct to the Stride website. Not available as far as I'm aware on Amazon. Once you've purchased your Stride Live foot pod, it is possible in the future, should you decide you want those power metrics, you can upgrade the firmware on the foot pod. It'll cost you another hundred dollars, but you can do it. The next thing to do is to attach your Stride Live to your shoe. Now, I have experimented with this a lot. And in my experience, the best place to put your foot pod is right on the flat part of your shoe, right at the end of your shoe. If you place it any higher on the laces, um, I find that the accuracy is not quite as good as if it's flat, as low down on the laces as possible. So as near your toes as you can possibly get it. That's where I've got mine. That's where it seems to give me the best accuracy. So placement of the foot pod, and this may be true for any foot pod in fact, you need to experiment, but I found that the lower I have it on my shoe, the nearer to the toes, then the better. Once you have the foot pod on your shoe, it's time to get onto Zwift and pair it up. The Stride and the Stride Live both broadcast in Bluetooth and in Ant Plus. So if you're using a PC, a Mac, or if you're using iOS, so uh, an iPhone or an iPod or Apple TV, the Stride, the Stride Live will work on all of those devices for Zwift. 
So here we are on the pairing screen and you will notice I am actually in the ride pairing screen as opposed to the run pairing screen. The reason for that is if you do have a stride, a full stride, or if you have upgraded your stride live, so it's got power metrics, uh, you might want to try this little trick so that when your run is uploaded to Strava or Garmin Connect, you will be able to see power listed there. Uh, so you go to the ride screen, you pair your stride power meter as a power meter. So there it is, that's my stride and I pair it there and then I go back to the run screen. And in the run screen here again, I've got my Garmin on my foot. If I shake my foot a bit, come on, wake up, wake up. There we are, the stride appears, click OK and there it is. You also will want to have the stride listed as a cadence sensor as well. So up there for run speed and down there for cadence. And then you click OK. And then you just wait as normal to go into your run. So here we are on our main run screen. Uh, something interesting to note, um, the stride can be a little picky about when it wants to start running. So let's just show you what happens. I will start my treadmill. So now my treadmill is moving. I'm going to gradually increase the speed. You'll notice my avatar is not moving at all. He stood still. Watch as we increase the speed. How long is it now? 10 seconds? 15 seconds maybe? Going a bit faster. We're now up to 6 kilometres an hour. And I'm now actually running. So I'm now running. We've been going about 20 seconds. We've gone up to... Eight kilometers an hour now. My avatar is standing there and now he starts running. What was that? 40 seconds? 30, 40 seconds? So just do be aware of that little oddity about the stride when you start running. If you're in an event and the countdown gets to zero and you're stood there on the treadmill, as has happened to me plenty of times, you will have a lot of catching up to do in your event. If you're just running on your own for fun, it's not going to be much of a problem. But in an event, you need to start running before the counter reaches zero and everyone else speeds off ahead of you. So now that we've got to the stage where we're actually running, how does the stride perform as a running foot pod, as a speed source in Zwift? Well, that's a very complicated question <laughs> and it may take me a little while to answer it. If you don't have a treadmill at home, then you're likely running on Zwift at a gym and gyms have very expensive, top quality treadmills with very powerful motors. The stride and the stride live perform absolutely rock solidly on those treadmills. When you set your treadmill to 10 kilometers an hour, the stride will interpret you running at 10 kilometers an hour. It will send that data to Zwift and your avatar will run at 10 kilometers an hour. Simple as that. Outdoors as well. If you were to run outdoors, um, your stride will be rock solid. In fact, a lot of people say they can even turn off their GPS on their watch and use the stride for more accurate distance and pace measurement. However, when you come to using a treadmill that you might have at home, one that's say less than uh, 2000 US dollars, less than a thousand UK pounds, you will be buying a treadmill that has a motor which is not quite as strong as those at the gym. And this is where it gets complicated. The stride is very accurate. However, it is tricked by the inaccuracy of your treadmill. What happens is because the motor is not very strong on a home grade treadmill, a consumer treadmill, when you put your foot down on the treadmill, on the belt when it's running, you will slow down the treadmill. Now, what the treadmill does in order to compensate for that is when you're in the air, when you've got both feet in the air running, the treadmill belt speed speeds up a little bit to compensate for that. So the treadmill is running at 10 kilometers an hour, say, and it feels to you like you are running at 10 kilometers an hour. Your heart rate will be the same as if you were running 10 kilometers an hour. Your leg speed will be the same. You will feel like you are running at 10 kilometers an hour. However, the stride will measure that slowdown of the belt when you put your foot on the belt. But it will not measure the speed that the belt speeds up 
when you're in the air because you are in the air and essentially you're stationary while you're in the air. When you're on a treadmill, you aren't actually moving, are you? So when you're in the air, the stride just measures you still. So the stride is very accurate because it's actually measuring how fast you are technically going. But it's inaccurate because you are feeling like you're running at 10 kilometers an hour. Does that make sense? It kind of took me a long time to figure it out. And I've had lots of tests with various other people. I've had lots of conversations with other people. If you troll the Stride community Facebook page or the Zwift Runners Facebook page, you will see other people with similar issues. And this is what we've come up with as the reason why the Stride seems to measure a lot slower on home consumer treadmills than it does outside in the real world or on gym grade industrial treadmills. So be aware of that. If you are using a home grade treadmill, the fix for it is, is relatively simple. It's not the end of the world. All you will do is go to the pairing screen and calibrate your stride foot pod. So this is how you do that. So here we are on the uh, running page and we click menu and we go to pair. And you can see there's a little spanner icon here. So we click that. Sometimes that happens. We have to select the stride, click OK, click the spanner again. And here we are. Choose a running speed. What you will do is you will set your treadmill to 10 kilometers an hour. You can choose any speed you want. 12 kilometers an hour. You can go right down to four and a half kilometers an hour. So whatever speed you want, set your treadmill to that speed. Click next and then click start and it will count down 60 seconds while you run on the treadmill at 10k an hour and it will calibrate your foot pod so that when you come back to Zwift, you should be running at 10 kilometers an hour on your treadmill and in Zwift. So just to recap, you can get your Stride Live foot pod from the Zwift website or the Stride website for $99. If you do buy a Stride Live, you can upgrade it to the full Stride by paying an extra $100 or so uh, to get the power metrics. When you start running on Zwift, put your foot pod as low down as you can on your shoe nearest to your toes. That will give you the greatest accuracy. When you run on Zwift, remember to start running early because if you're in an event, the stride sometimes takes quite a while to actually start running within Zwift. Also, when you're running on a home grade treadmill, you might notice the speed is not quite the same as your treadmill, so you might need to calibrate your foot pod. If you're running at a gym, then you will find your stride foot pod is incredibly accurate. And that is it. That's everything you need to know about the stride foot pod. If you do have any further questions, please go and ask in the Zwift Runners Facebook page, or you can post a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you. But really, Everything you need to run with a stride on Zwift is in this video. Thanks very much for watching. Do take care. Bye bye.